Hello, hello, hello! Andrew here. And now since the Sherman household is done with quarantine, it's time to get back to our Starlink series. So in today's episode, we're going to be tackling one of the biggest questions that I continue to get asked. Can you officially cut the cord and watch the big game? How does it work? What do you do? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's episode. So to test this out properly, I live in Ohio, and Ohio State college football is a very big deal here. So I figured it was worth going ahead and playing the game, getting it to live stream, and see how it performed. I have to say that since I don't have any other service, I have no other cable, I was forced to go to an online streaming service because we just can't pick up the game by going to YouTube and like watching somebody else's upload. It doesn't work that well. What we settled on was a program called Fubo TV. We're paying $70 a month right now because they had a wide variety of sporting events that you could pick from and the $70 a month plan that they offered meant that I could cancel it at any point in time if I found a better service out there as well as it would allow me to stream up to 10 separate TVs at the same time. So if I was away from my house I could use my phone or if I was go ahead and be in the house I could have multiple TVs on multiple different levels streaming at the same point in time. And that was for 70 bucks a month. Now. In my family, we really don't do anything for TV that's live except for college football. So the reality is we only need live TV for the six months a year it takes to get from the start of football season to basically when the football season is over with for college, we start paying attention to the playoffs and the Super Bowl. So that encompasses six months worth. So for me, amortized, that 70 bucks is more like $35 a cost. Right, And since Starlink costs $100 to begin with, $99, and that's tax included, the reality is it's not that bad. Now on the side of that, we do have Netflix and Disney+. Plus. Those are the two streaming services that we actually keep here in the house at all times. So I figured one of the good tests that we could do is here in a moment you'll actually see that we'll be streaming the game, we'll be streaming a couple other games at the same point in time, and then eventually I'd like to go ahead and tax it and see how it works with Disney Plus and Netflix while trying to watch the games at the same point in time. Full disclosure here, while going through this episode, I did learn that I could have chosen Hulu through Disney Plus and it would have substantially lowered my cost. I'm paying 70 bucks right now, and if I paired up with my Disney Plus and actually got Hulu, it would only be an additional $20. The kicker is, though, is I don't know if that's going to put me in a year-long contract or not. And I guess technically it would still be cheaper for the year-long contract, but I signed up for what I signed up with, so we're going to test what we have. So you can see in this first video here, we're actually watching the Ohio State-Indiana game, and this is one of the points in time where Ohio State scores a touchdown. It's actually a replay of the game. And underneath, you'll notice that I have two MacBook Airs going at the same point in time. One playing the Tennessee-Alabama game, and the other one playing the Notre Dame-USC game. These are all three live streaming at the same point in time. I was actually really impressed to see that I don't see any of these little circles that are down on the bottom, you know, to say that it's loading. We got no pause times during any of these games. I was really happy with that. And because of that, I got, a, I got myself a little bit of an idea and I said, you know what? What if we wanted to tax the system even more? What would it look like if instead of having just one TV and two computers, if I took one TV and five computers? So at this point, you can see we're back watching the Ohio State game along with five separate screens. Five computers below, all streaming something different at the same point in time. The Ohio State game is crystal clear and flawless. I'm getting great views from them. And when we look across at the five screens on the bottom, what you're actually going to find is that the lower left-hand side is actually streaming the Hallmark Channel at that point in time. The second screen coming over once we get to the bottom, and you see that the Hallmark Channel is in commercial, right now we're looking at halftime of the Tennessee-Alabama game. From halftime, we move on over to see the Notre Dame game versus USC. You can see that they're actually reviewing an instant replay. And then I decided, you know what, with the two Google Chromebooks that we got, let's go ahead and stream Loki and see what Loki looks like from the Disney Plus side, and then actually go ahead and move over to the other Google, Chrome, Google Chromebook and stream something from Netflix. In this case, Guardians of the Galaxy, um, one of the Lego versions. So just... You can see that I'm getting really good resolution, really good 
uh, streaming service from all of these different computers. The best, obviously, is going to be the MacBook Airs that I have. They have by far the best screen. I noticed that. They're pretty close to actually being a TV themselves. But I'm streaming all five at the same time. And some of these computers are eight years old, right? And I have no issues. So I have to say I'm thoroughly impressed with this. Now keep in mind, I have not moved my satellite up to the second story yet. So that's with the supposed obstruction coming from that tree. So I had zero interventions with six different screens at one time, all streaming, four of which being live TV, three of which being sporting events. So I'd suffice to say, yeah, you can go ahead and you can stream the big game via Starlink with zero interventions. Now, if you're interested, because I have started learning a little bit more about my Fubo TV and about some other options that are available, I can do a video episode in the future about how we've cut the cord completely and some of the things that I've learned because it can get pretty expensive if you're not paying attention. Tell me down in the comments below if that's something that interests you. Otherwise, I have to say this was a huge success and I'm really glad I cut the cord and I won't be going back. Well, that about wraps up today's episode. What I want to know, though, is how you feel about our Starlink presentation today. Did it meet your expectations? Do you think you could stream the big game? Tell me about it down in the comments below. And while you're down there, if you haven't done so already, hit that thumbs up button, click that subscribe button, and consider sharing this with one of your friends and ding that notification bell. It really does help out the channel. Thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, here's another Starlink video that I think you'll enjoy as well. We'll be testing online gaming in this one. Here at the Dad Manual, we produce videos twice every single week. And until next time, I'm Andrew Sherman. This is the Dad Manual. And remember, failure isn't bad. Failure to try and learn is. Have a good one.